the spiritual home of New Zealand Rugby League, where the hardest men left their blood and guts on the ground. Literally. A field of dreams. Or nightmares for the King Wally Lewis. Keep the legend of Carlow Park alive. Visit carlowparkdiehards.co.nz. A site where you can watch interviews with Kiwi League icons Kurt Sorensen, Olsen Filipina, Dean Bell and more. carlowparkdiehards.co.nz So on that time, we're going to talk a wee bit around the Test Series now. So the um, uh, the first match um, was played, and it was a tight encounter, and I think that was played in Australia. Yep, that was yep. played Lang Park. Yep, and um, can you remember much about that game? Not really, I don't like to remember much about the game's blues. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, well then we're going to be upset about 82, uh, the test match number two. Uh, so, exactly. Um, test match number two, man. The boys have just come off a pretty tight encounter. We're getting ready now to play series number two, and I think, you know, uh, because I've been fortunate to talk to some of the other boys that you played with in the team, um, that there was a lot of confidence and they looked like, you know, we were going to test the Australians' medal in that game. Um, can you remember anything about the build-up for the series test for number two at Carlow Park being back home? Well, yeah, it was funny, you know, when the cup built up against Carlow Park in 1982, I think it's one of the test matches that uh, yeah, you could say was sort of got away from us. You know, I, I, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to talk about because, it's, you know, you, the thing that sticks in my head, you know, there was 63 seconds left to go on that test match. Two Sundays ago at Carlow Park, the Kiwis were robbed of victory in the dying minutes of the second test. The Kiwis had done everything but win. I'll never forget that, you know, when Australia scored in the corner. Uh, and then the, we were just shattered. And the build up for the third test, no one knew what to do. You know, it could be, you know, the players, cold crowd, and, you know, everyone then, even probably TV audience, was just shattered because of what happened in, in that last 63 seconds. Mate, I was standing in the. Um the concrete stand and those last 60 seconds to go and the big pass out to Rebo, Rebo and scored, in the corner. and you could have heard a pin drop That's exactly and right. I've never walked out of the place it was like a tomb it was just what was it like in the changing rooms it was probably worse you know we we it took us probably you know extra half half an hour 45 minutes before we even bothered getting dressed and getting out of the walking out of the changing room and you know, and thinking, you know, the one about, you know, the one that got away, and where do we go from here? You know, where do we go to? I'm told that um, Wally Lewis came into the changing rooms afterwards, and um, uh, and paid some commiserations to Lowy just in regards to obviously he was well liked being a uh, yep. next Queensland boy. Queensland that, boy. Know, they were sorry that it happened to him. Um, well, I guess you know, test match one was test match one. When did you think it turned around in the week following leading up to test match number three? Well, we Graham didn't know what to what what to do at that stage. No one knew because we were all still so shattered. Training sessions, like you wouldn't call them training sessions, you know, because we just couldn't believe that it had happened. You know, it's trying to it's like trying to you know face reality, but we couldn't. There, as he did at Carlow Park that bitter Sunday. It's as if. Someone close to you had died. You know, we'd lost something that we, you know, we thought that we had, and all of a sudden it just slipped through our fingers. Football wasn't a game for us in the, in the dressing room, was it? How could that be called a game? That was a bloody tragedy. You all know yourselves. So we must wonder how could football be called a game? My wife said to me, "Why do you do it?" Because she was worried. She. I reckon she was worried that I was going to bloody jump off the bridge or something stupid like that because she thought it had affected me that much. And I know it had a major effect on you blokes. We wonder how could it be called a game? Because of what happened. 
So Laurie decided to uh, advertise on the radio that the queue was going to be walking up and down Queen Street. And uh, he didn't tell any of us. We just got on the bus and thought we were going to another training session. I think it was on a Wednesday or Thursday afternoon. And then uh, <coughs> we're all sitting in the bus and Laurie gets up. You know, we're not going to go train this afternoon. We'll probably, we're going to go to the city. We'll have a train, late train session. But we're going to go to the city and we're going to walk up and down Queen Street. And everyone's going, you're fucking kidding. I said, no way. And all the players got, I'm not getting out of this fucking bus. I said, you're getting out with your luggage. I said, no fucking way. Not after what happened after the second test. You know, the players, we, we're not. We said, we're getting out of this bus. And like I said, you're all getting out regardless or not, no matter what happens, if they pull you out. So the bus stops at the top of Queen Street. And we saw no one moved. <laughs> and then when Lowe gets mad, and we, know, and we know when he gets mad, he gets upset, we move. So we all get out of this bus. We top of Queen Street, we start walking down, and we go, and here we go. And I think it might have been... Oh, it might have been Kurt, I think. He said, well, you told me to get some helmets for us or something. I said, why? Well, he said, they'll probably throw stuff on us after what happened at the second test. I said, yeah, you're not bloody wrong. So anyway, we carried walking, walking down Queen Street, one side of Queen Street. And then we hear all these people go, yay, screaming, yelling. Kiwi's here, Kiwi's here. We go, what? I said, these people are unbelievable. I said, yep. I'm getting emotional now, you know, because it's, it's, it's really good, mate. It's, it's really good. good. It's good. And, That's uh, why we go on there, man. And it uh, lifted everyone. And we couldn't believe what was happening. You know, we... Because we always thought that... Because uh, if we lost that test match, we left our country down. And it's one thing that still sticks in all our minds. Uh, sticks in mind, as you can see. And they all came out, come out of the shops. We had scaffolders, you know, <laughs> up high in buildings, yelling out the Kiwis here, the Kiwis here, and we are just going around that fast from uh, the top right down to the bottom. All we could hear was Kiwis, Kiwis, Kiwis. And we walked back up to the top and we got on that bus. How'd you feel? Unbelievable. It was like we were all born again. We had a reason to live. And uh, the main reason, big reason, to take out the third match. So we um, we finished the training. We've got a couple of days left before the the weekend rolls around. Yep. Was that the moment that you thought this is the turning of the tide? We're on here, or did you feel it was on when it came to kick off? Well, it was for us, for the players. Well, for me, it was on after that experience we just gone through with the fans that had come out and did what they did and uh, it affected everybody we trained that hard and we all felt there's nothing going to stop us with that third test and we got on the bus we didn't say nothing to each other it, just by chance that the um, the Australian, Australian Aussies had pulled up beside us the traffic lights before you turn right into Carlo Park to go down to the gates and into the change room. This is game day, right? This is game day. Yep. And all we could say to each other is, look at those, we're going to fucking kill them. You want to kill these Everyone dies here today. Everyone dies. And there was a message everyone sunk into their head that, that day for the third match. And no one said a word after that bus had gone past the Aussies, no one had said anything. It was mainly quiet before kickoff. Got now one, one thing happened before kickoff. You guys walked out onto the park. Can you remember what it was? Yeah, the fans. Yeah, and what did the team do? We went right across over to the grandstands and applauded the fans. And, uh, you know, it's that was the only way we could thank him. And you did that, what mate. They did. You did that. Yeah. You did and that. And then when we uh, 
kick off come, everyone would just said, we die here. We die here. This is us. At what point stores. during that game, Olsen, did you realise that you had the medal on these guys and it was just about over for them? Well, it just, just goes back to the kickoff. That was it, you know, and everything else that had built up to it. You know, I, I, I just keep going back to the Queen Street, you know, and there was no way, we didn't care who we were playing, but there was no way the Australians were going to even get a point. And that was our main objective. We knew everything. Everyone knew that. You know, we didn't have to say anything to each other. You know, we could look at each other and you could read in their minds. We're going to die here. I don't care what we need, whatever we need to do, these guys aren't going to beat us. And half time come. What was the chat at half time? Now, um, we're going to break into the little half time chat thing here. We're back into the Carlow Park changing rooms with the little wee glass windows out the side. <laughs> hey, there's yeah, enough chat going on outside from the people in the stands, I would have thought. Can you remember anything that sort of came up in the halftime chat? Well, it was amazing because at halftime chat, you know, I don't think Lowy said much. We did the talking. The players did the talking. This is us. We're out, we're going to kill them. Well, this is war. No one gets through our defence. Everyone tackles their asses off. And we go out there and we die for this match, this test match. Fans were going crazy. They did all this for us. They got us here. Let's go and finish them off. And we went out there talking to each other. We die here. No one gets through. I don't care if I, well, you, I don't care if I, who gets hurt. No one gets hurt. If you're hurt, you get up, and, we, and you know who's right behind you. We're all, we're all in this together, and that's us. Do you remember much of that 40 minutes? No, I don't. All I remember is what we kept on talking about, what we said at half time. Everyone said at half time. We didn't have to say much. We just knew just by looking at each other, and because of the atmosphere in that ground from the fans, you know, which really, like I said, I go, I can't say enough about what happened in Queen Street. I think every one of those people in Queen Street came to that test match, and the third test match in Carlow Park. And you could tell that because all we could hear was Kiwis, 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 and the players just grew another leg. You know, every time Australia made break, break any tackle, made a break somewhere. We had three, four players. You know, I got, I got them. I'll fucking get them. And I'll get them fucking first. You know, and, and that's what it was like because the crowd, the fans that did it for us, and it was our way. You know, just to, to you know, pay back to what they had done for us during the week because we were so shattered. The test match finishes. You busted out a mean hucker. KT exactly. was leading it, mate. I mean, it was just awesome. Joe Rapati was flaring off there too, I think. Um, how'd the night go? <laughs> night, night was was good. No, no, you know, but we didn't get ever carried away with it. 
the night was just fantastic because we had did what we all wanted to do for our fans, for our country and mainly for ourselves and for Graham Lowe and everyone that was involved that had been involved with us in that that whole three test matches. If you were to pick the best test match in Olsen Phil Finer's uh, career, would that be one of them? Yeah, definitely. That would be on the third test when we beat Australia 18-0. Olsen Philippina looking for the quick pass. Steps out of two tackles. Eventually caught by Pierce and Morton. Olsen Philippina. Philippina again. He's got the pass up nicely to Howie Tamani. Howie Tamani's in. Green has it out. Philippina. Philippina's in again. Terry Jack coming across to tackle him. Pierce. Great play by New Zealand. Jack. Good tackle, Austin Filipina again. Filipina. Filipina's done it again. Once again, he's got James Little away at the point. Filipina. Oh. A little chip oh. over the top again. Oh, this chip is down there. Austin Filipina bumps up with Ella. Kevin Tavani is up there showing you turn to spin. Filipina back into Hume again. Again, puts the pass up to Filipina again. Philippina has been in dynamic form today. Hey, Philippina, a little chip through for Philippina. Still trying to kick it to bounce. Still playing. 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 Yeah, it is, mate. Oh. So, um, what an honour. I've seen it, I've seen it. Yeah, mate. I've seen it, I've got yeah. to get one. Yeah, well, mate, you won't get any more. Shit. This is it. And there's only one left I know. to go. There's only I know. one left to go. So I did want I to... said it earlier uh, with my daughter showed him and said, no, there's no more left. I said, oh, man. Yeah, no. No, I, um, when these came up, so we'll talk a little bit about this, I'm going to wind this thing up and then do the presentation thing because like this is something from probably my personal love for you and the other four boys um, and I'm talking like for probably on behalf of the Carlo Park crew anyway, you know, mm. they watch this, is um, man it's been an honour today to be here with you and to talk about some of the old times and I know you've um, you've shared a lot of passion and a lot of truth with us, you know, in regards yeah, exactly. to what's taking place man, so I mean I've still got goosebumps, look. <laughs> um, You're embarrassing so, me now. No, no. <laughs> so on behalf of all of the fans, man, everyone out there who loves you, um, want to thank you for your time and being with us here at Carlo yeah, Park and bringing more. back those um, fond memories. And um, uh, I know you only get back here a little bit. So uh, what we've done, mate, is that um, as you've touched on, Carlo Park, the railway stand got pulled down. It was made out of heart remu. In that heart remu, there were 300 limited edition shields that were done. And um, and I secured five of them for the guys who um, got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of love and mana for man, and you're one of them. So on behalf of Carlo Park, mate, what have you? We're going to present you with. I think this one's two two twenty three. And if we pull that out, mate, you got a little bit of Carlo Park to take back home with you, man. Joy, thank you very very much. All right. Oh, thank you, my man. Thank you very All much. All good.